Good morning. Welcome to the Church of Our Lady of the Lakes. We welcome all visitors and members of this area of faith community. Just a reminder that the daily mass on Tuesday will be at Glen Oaks. We welcome the Knights of Columbus today who are fulfilling most of the liturgical ministries at this mass. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So let us stand and greet the presence of Christ in one another. Please join in singing our gathering hymn, Lift High the Cross, number 713. Good morning. In gratitude to God for our many blessings, we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin to pray, let us pause to pray for God's mercy and for the forgiveness of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. If all of our four, five, six-year-olds and first graders could come forward with their prayer. If we could all say together, let us, if we could all say together, go with our blessings to hear God's word. Go with our blessings to hear God's word. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. 
the word of the Lord. Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, <coughs> as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature, he himself, understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. This Gospel is such a blessing for all of us as we see a very human response coming from Jesus as he reacted to injustice and what Jesus saw as a desecration of the temple. The gospel said that zeal for God's house consumed Jesus. The word zeal comes from a Greek word meaning to be hot, to begin to boil. Jesus experienced deeply the human emotions of disgust, frustration, and anger. Anger and zeal are strong emotions that bubble up inside us that are characterized by intensity or deep passion about something. J just what was Jesus upset about? The sheep, the oxen, and doves were not the issue. They were the normal animals and birds used in sacrifice at that time people having to pay for the animals or birds that they wanted to offer for sacrifice was not the issue either. At times, people traveled great distances to come to Jerusalem to worship 
and could not bring animals or birds with them. However, no coin with a picture of a king or an emperor could be used outright for the purchase of a sacrificial animal or bird. The coins had to be exchanged for a special temple coin. Jesus' anger was with those doing the temple coin exchange. They kept raising their exchange rates for no reason outside of greed. They were no longer just providing a service, but were taking advantage of people who wanted to worship their God. Their increasing prices made it almost impossible for the poor to practice their faith. That situation made Jesus' disgust, frustration, and anger very reasonable. It was a justified as well as a natural reaction to perceived injustice and the presence of evil. The people Jesus was dealing with were interested only in themselves and money, not in the worship of God. It would be like the parish deciding that communion wafers and wine were too expensive to provide and required people to pay for them if they wanted to receive communion. It could not be BYOB, bring your own bread or bring your own bottle. It you would be required to use our particular brand that we would exclusively sell. At the beginning, our franchise people would all sit outside the doors of the church and sell wafers and wine at a reasonable price. But the franchise people started seeing an opportunity here since they had a monopoly. They got together and decided to raise prices. Suddenly, in order to get into mass, you have to get by all these peddlers and the price is now up to $20 a wafer, and it's going up every time you come to Mass. Now, if that would not drive you to anger, rage, and zeal, I would really wonder about you. What Jesus did in the Gospel was very disruptive as he turned over their tables and chased the money changers and the animals out of the area. Jesus' fury and anger could not be mistaken. During his ministry, Jesus expressed his anger, frustration, and disgust in other ways than the way he did in today's gospel as he dealt with different situations. He told his disciples that when people refused to listen to them, to shake the dust from their sandals as testimony against them and move on, do not argue, do not waste your time. Jesus sometimes dealt silently with those who already had their minds made up and he knew that they were not about to change. Close to crucifixion, he refused to answer any more of the dumb questions Pilate and others asked him. At times, he challenged the Pharisees and listened to their accusations and insinuations, but he knew that it was a waste of time to respond to them. He named the truth, called them hypocrites, whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones, and other names. Eventually, he just prayed for his executioners and for those who wanted him dead. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Gospel said Jesus did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. In other words, Jesus was fully human. He understood human nature then, and he understands it now. Jesus agreed to speak the language of humanity. His understanding of us arises from his being flesh of our flesh and bone of our bone. He knows what it means to love, to want, to suffer, to lose, to fear, to hate, and to want to run away from it all sometimes. He knows how it feels to be disappointed and abandoned by friends. 
He knows and understands in the very heart of his being how hard it is to be misunderstood and how it feels to be betrayed, rejected, and have your friends even deny they know you or to have things done to you underhandedly. He knows what it feels like to disagree with some teachings of his own religion. He knows well the pain of bending his will and surrendering his life to a suffering that none of us would ever choose for ourselves. Because Jesus chose to be so profoundly immersed in all things human, there is no aspect of the human condition with which he cannot empathize or understand. For that reason, he is always approachable, and we, having sinned, need not fear to ever draw near to him. There, in Jesus' presence, we will not find reproach or anger. There will be no belittling or biting critical remarks. Jesus only desires to share the joys and ease the burdens of our lives, even those that things that make us angry. Anger is a volatile thing in our world to the point where anger management classes and counseling are often prescribed for those who afflict harm onto others themselves or property. Learning how to express our anger in appropriate ways is every Christian's responsibility. Repressing anger tends to make us little powder kegs that can blow up unexpectedly, or that anger can sometimes come out sideways and be the cause for behavior problems, major communication issues, or someone's excuse for drinking, talking about someone behind their back, or other inappropriate ways of dealing with our issues. Jesus showed us that righteous anger can be expressed without sinning and that it can prompt us to deal with injustice and the presence of evil. Expressing our anger over real injustice or evil is a lot different than getting petty and flying off the handle over something that is or was not done exactly like we would like. As we pick and choose our battles, may we also work at improving how we express our anger and be willing to let compassion, mercy, forgiveness, and understanding melt away any bitterness we carry or help us to walk away from those situations we cannot change, just as Jesus did. As we continue our Lenten journey, we can approach Jesus with anything, and he will understand, for he did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well and still does. And let us stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our special prayers for this week before our God. That church leaders will promote a simple Christian spirit and foster a deeper love of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people will be treated justly, especially those whose beliefs differ from our own, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that those who suffer from the aftermath of war and natural disasters and those who lack life's basic necessities will know God's care for them through our help and generosity. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray that the Spirit will be with our RCIA candidates preparing for reception into the Catholic Church. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially Doug Dietz's brother, Patrick, may rest in the peace of Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That during Lent, we may seek new ways to encounter Christ in our daily lives, primarily through service to the poor and lonely, and for the intentions written in our book of prayer requests. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear our prayers which we bring to you today in your Son's name, Christ, our loving Lord. Amen. During our collection and preparation of gifts, please join in singing, These Alone Are Enough, number 396. This will not be on the screen, but is in the books 396. Remain seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, be pleased, O oh Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now together let us stand and pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please join together in singing our communion hymn, I Am the Bread of Life, number 364.
and let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless each of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended now. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Have a great week. Please join in singing our closing hymn, City of God, number 386. seen a great light. The Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. sons of the morning, we are daughters of day, the one who has loved us has brightened our way, the Lord of all kindness has called us to be a light for his people to set their hearts free. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day.